Hello and welcome to Super Deep Movie Analysis. I'm actor and filmmaker Lex Zorn and I'm joined for I think the 13th or 14th time by um, actress and filmmaker Michelle Gusso who is by far my most frequent guest host in the series. And you know, last year when we did our episode on Creed 2, we commented that when you're a diehard Rocky slash Creed fan as we are, that a new film in the series these days is roughly a once a decade event, so it makes it really special when it happens. And we really treasure and appreciate that moment, especially the first time going into seeing a new movie in the series. You know, I always say you only see a movie once for the first time. You know, you might enjoy seeing a movie 50 times over the years, but there's something about that first time that can never be repeated. Like, you know, we always talk about our, our first reaction to Drago throwing in the towel, you know, is oh. such a dramatic moment that can never be repeated after you've seen it the first time. Um, but anyway, um, because of the sparsity of um, Rocky product in recent years, it's made us really thankful for any additional um, opportunities we have to delve into the series and last year we jumped on the opportunity to super deep analyze the alternate cut of Rocky V that's circulated in recent years on Daily Motion, the website. And now we're very excited that um, the long-awaited Rocky IV director's cut is on the way um, in a few weeks, 30 days from today, it makes its uh, premiere. And right now we are going to super deep analyze the trailer of this cut. And just to give you a quick rundown, the um, director's cut will be showing in theaters for one night only. It's 30 days from today. That's Thursday, not Friday, but Thursday, no no Thursday November the 11th. That's Veterans Day. And it's going to be, um, you, you can find, you know, whatever theaters in your area are showing it on online. And there will also be an interactive Q&A session with Stallone that night. So I'm really excited about it. I definitely will be there in a theater to see it. And then the next day it will be released on digital and streaming. And I assume it will get some kind of DVD slash Blu-ray Blu release also. So anyway, Michelle, you know, um, I remember six years ago when we um, super deep analyzed Rocky IV as part of our preparation for Creed, I mentioned that it was a product of its time um, in several ways, including that it was short. It was 91 minutes, which mm -hmm. is the shortest film in the series. I think, I think it's 10 minutes shorter than the next shortest one. And that was because that was a period of time from, from roughly 1983 to 92 in which movie studios were pressuring filmmakers to keep their movies down to 90 minutes so you could show it more times in a day and make more money. And that practice ended in the early 90s when theaters started showing the same movie on multiple screens at the same time. And I don't know why it took so long for anybody to figure <laughs> out they, they could do that. But anyway, that resulted in longer and therefore better developed movies. So uh, for that reason, um, Rocky IV, I mean, I, I would welcome a director's cut of any movie in the series. But Rocky IV, I think, is the one that has the most room um, for a director's cut that's distinct and um, deeper than the original cut. I never thought of it in, in those particular terms. I guess because I have always just enjoyed Rocky IV so mm -hmm. much, I never actually stopped and thought about how long it was. But certainly as a filmmaker, I'm always, always thinking about I want, because you know that every movie is long. You could have a movie that's four hours long, and you know there's something they've cut. Mm -hmm. And so I always have that curiosity of what they possibly cut. And so for me, it's kind of more like looking and going, I wonder what they left out of this. And it would be really interesting to see that. So that's kind of more where I approach it. Okay, well... Right now, we're going to super deep analyze the trailer, and of course, after the cut, the director's cut comes out, we will, of course, do an episode on that as well. Um, and then, obviously, you know, Creed Three. We'll talk about that later. That's due out next year. But anyway, um, so anyway, the, the the trailer. It's a little over three minutes long. It starts with a distant shot of a boxing ring, then a shot of a Soviet flag, which, by the way, I really wonder how many younger viewers will even recognize what that is. Huh. Um, because there are a lot of young people who don't re who weren't alive in the USSR days who are fans of the series now. Mm -hmm. 
But anyway, then we see a shot of Drago walking to the ring amid uh, the voiceover. Russia will now throw its hat into the ring. Then we, we see the MGM logo. Then we see Apollo Creed in his swimming pool looking at the TV while he says in voiceover, I've seen this Drago fight. And that, that exact line was not in the original. Then um, you see Drago uh, punching a pad in the demonstration. Then you see Nikolai Koloff, played by Michael Pataki, saying, Drago is super athlete, while he stands next to Ludmila Drago, played by Stallone's then-wife, Brigitte Nielsen, and they seem to be talking to the media. Then we see a quick shot of someone preparing a steroid injection. Then um, Apollo says, I know I can beat him. Then we see Drago training in a gym. Then Rocky, um, apparently in the scene at, a, uh, at his house, says, Hey, Apollo, look, maybe when the show is over, you've got nothing more to prove. And that that and while you, and you can see that they're watching one of their fights, then um, we see Apollo dancing, you know, <laughs> in his James Brown routine bef- before the fight. Yeah, while, it's very iconic. So. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. While Drago <laughs> looks on, then um, Adrian tells Rocky, and this is another clip that is not in the original. Adrian says he thinks he's fighting for the whole country, but his reasons are wrong. Then we see. Um, um, an advertisement, a print advertisement for the uh, Apollo Drago fight, uh, where you see a, a picture of Apollo with the words "It's Showtime," and then um, we see Apollo ask Rocky. Well, he says Apollo tells Rocky, "I'm asking as a friend." Then we see Drago training. Then Apollo tells Rocky, "Stand in my corner just this one last time," and you know that statement, you know, is ominous when you think about it. Yeah. You know, it, literally, it's like I remember you pointed out, I never even thought about this before back in the Rocky Three episode, that when um, Rocky, um, well, when Apollo's complaining about Polly being annoying, Rocky says it takes about six years to get to know this guy, and Apollo says, I don't have six years, and you pointed out how, you know, um, he admit that phrase literal, he admit the phrase figuratively, but it turned out to be literally true, you know, because he died less than six years later, so... This is another example of that, that unfortunately it was the last time that, you know, Rocky was mm-hmm. standing in Apollo's corner for tragic reasons. And then on amid a black screen, we see the phrase, the classic film recut. Then we see a shot of the crowd. Then we see a shot of Apollo and Drago, apparently at the start of the match. Then a shot of Drago pushing down Apollo's gloves. Then, um, and this is apparently going to be one difference in this new cut. Drago's going to talk more in English. Um... Drago is at the press conference saying, I did not come here to lose, which is a di- which is mm. because remember Drago did not talk at either press conference in the original cut, nor did he talk, um, you know, um, in, in his in media demonstration where he was demonstrating his punching power. And then we see Drago punching Apollo and knocking him down. Then um, Nikolai Koloff saying, perhaps this simple defeat will be a perfect example of how pathetic your society has become, interspersed with clips of Drago, of Drago punching Apollo. Then in the corner between rounds, Apollo tells Rocky something like, it's hard to make out because Apollo's speech is, you know, groggy, but he, it's, the, what I make out is, if you're my friend, don't you stop this fight, man. Rocky responds, sounding worried, saying, hey, don't do this to me. Then we see Drago through the fatal punch. Then a- Apollo is on the canvas as a commentator says Apollo is down. Then Drago in the post-fight interview says, I cannot be defeated. And then Rocky uh, is attending to Apollo sh- and shouting, somebody get a doctor over here. Dr- and then Drago um, says, um, soon whole world will know my name, Drago, along with shots of reporters running to the ring and Adrian looking alarmed. Then we see Nikolai Koloff uh, walking toward an exit and then turns around and looks back, apparently, at Drago. Then we see um, Drago repeating his last name while Rocky holds up Apollo's head. And then Rocky is at the funeral telling um, Adrian, I let it happen. Another quote that's not in the original. Um, Then um, yet another um, bit that's not in the original, Rocky continues... um, I've got to take everything he's got amid individual shots of Rocky, Adrian, and Drago. And then we see a black screen with the phrase, with new scenes. And then we see um, a clip of of Rocky's meeting with the Boxing Commission, which 
um, a clip of which was in the Rocky IV theatrical trailer, but ended up being cut from the final product. And one of the commissioners said, he's had one professional fight and one man is dead. And then Adrian shouts to Rocky, it's suicide, you can't win, interspersed with Rocky kneeling in the locker room before the Drago, the Drago fight and Rocky putting the heavyweight champion, the heavyweight championship belt on Apollo's coffin. Then Rocky tells Rocky Jr. Uh, in a long bit of dialogue that's not in the original, there's going to be a time when you're going to have to do things that other people don't think are right, but they're going to be right for you. you got to do what you got to do. And during part of that quote, Rocky and Adrian are shown embracing at the house. Then we see Rocky training in the USSR. Then at the Rocky Drago press conference, a female reporter asks, has the fight been set yet? Rocky responds, it's in Russia. Polly responds, are you nuts? Then amid the black screen, again, it's, um, we see the phrase, voted the greatest fight. Then we see Rocky again training in the USSR. And then we go back to the black screen where it says, in cinematic history. So in other words, um, the full message is voted the greatest fight in cinematic history. Then we see Rocky and Drago training interspersed amid Duke saying, all your strength, all your power, all your love, everything you've got. Then we see Rocky and Duke in the cabin with Duke saying, you know what to do. Then we see um, Drago pushing down Rocky, Rock, Drago pushing down Rocky's gloves, and then Duke telling Rocky, "Do it." Then we see our Rocky and Drago both training, and then amid black screen, the phrase with never seen before footage. Then we see Rocky in training, then Rocky and Drago fighting, then Rocky and Adrian embracing upon Adrian's arrival in the USSR. Then Rocky and Drago fighting, interspersed with Duke saying. He's not a machine, he's a man. And then we actually see a clip from Rocky III of Apollo telling Rocky, be more man than him, referring to Clubber Lang, Mr. T's character. Then we have the iconic line um, where Drago says to Rocky, I must break you. Then uh, Rocky and Drago are shown fighting as the commentator says Rocky is in serious trouble. Then we see Rocky lying on the canvas saying, breathe, don't be scared. And then we actually have a couple of quotes from Rocky V, surprisingly. We see um, Mickey shouting, get up, you son of a bitch. And then while Rocky is being punched, we hear the uh, we hear an Adrian voiceover from Rocky V saying, all those spiders you beat, you beat them with heart. And then um, we see Rocky training um, in the USSR again while Mickey shouts, get up. And then you hear Apollo shouting, get up, from Rocky III. And then we see a rapid photo collage of the first four movies in the series. And then um, we see Rocky shouting Drago from the end of the training montage in the original cut. And then amid the black screen, the letters R-O-C-K-Y appear one at a time. Then we see Rocky punching Drago. And then amid the black screen, again, we see Versus followed by um, D-R-A-G-O one at a time. And then we see Drago punch Rocky. And then finally, in the last shot, we see amid a black screen the words Rocky IV, Rocky vs. Drago, the ultimate director's cut, followed by the words an unforgettable one night only fathom in theater event, followed by the words experience, experience it in widescreen on November 1st, no, excuse me, experience it in widescreen November 11th, 2021, followed by the words on digital and on demand everywhere November 12th, 2021, followed by the basic credits. So... All right, they, they packed a lot of information. So what, what are your um, initial thoughts about the trailer? It seemed longer when you were reading it than it actually <laughs> yeah. is when you're watching it. I, I uh, counted 68 segments <laughs> in, in, in about 3 minutes and 20 seconds, so I went um, over it all last night. No, it was, I was, when I was watching it, my main, like my main thing was trying to pick out what was there that wasn't in the original mm -hmm. movie. You know, um, because certainly if you've got a director's cut, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm not going to name movie names or anything else, but you've probably seen this too, or somebody, they've made like a new cut of something, mm -hmm. but the trailer doesn't include any of the new stuff. Right, or right. What. And so I was particularly, when you sent that to me, I was like, well, I hope they have some of the new clips yeah. in there, <laughs> because what's the point? And, and so I was very pleased, actually, um, just if you know, an initial reaction that it was packed with the new clips, mm -hmm. which to me, because it, since a trailer is really to encourage you to go see the film. Yes. 
And if you're seeing, you know, for a director's cut, if you're not seeing any of the new thing, you're like, well, why should I go see it? Right. So this being um, packed with that, I, I think it really was good in doing that particular job of saying, you know what, it it is worth going to see this new version of it or a different version of it. Yeah, and you know, the original version was 90, uh, it was 91 minutes. Now this theatrical cut I've read is 96 minutes. That could change because sometimes, and this is this is true, sometimes movies are re-edited literally days before their release for mm-hmm. a wide variety of reasons. But right now, this cut is listed at 96 minutes, which is only five minutes longer. However, supposedly 40 minutes of this cut right. are not in the original, so this is going to be almost half material that's new to us. Right, and it, the way I was thinking of it, too, is obviously that they are using maybe different takes of scenes we've already seen and, yeah. and played a little differently and just see how that comes out. Yeah, and one thing that I do gather from this trailer is that some of the dialogue is, is deeper. Yeah. You know, um, one thing that I, I mentioned is that they were able to get away to some extent with not having a lot of character development in Rocky Four because these were mostly very familiar characters right. already. They were already very well established. Um, but what it, what I gather, and I, I actually... Um, Stallone first promoted... He, he first announced the project a little over a year ago on his Instagram page. I think it was maybe October of last year. And he would show a few very short clips, like maybe 20 seconds. And, um, you know, back... For me, it was several months where just about... I, I think every Hollywood movie um, suspended production. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people did start working on director's cuts because there was... <laughs> You know, yeah. they had they had limited options. Yeah. It's kind of like how I did a lot of voice acting. My son and I did a lot of quarantine film contests. But Stallone worked on this director's cut. And I, I'd like to see director's cuts of all the movies. But like I said, I think Rocky Four has the most room um, for a director's cut that's distinct from the original for, for the reasons I mentioned earlier. But it does seem to me that he's going for a deeper, more serious tone with this. Like, for example, the, the father-son conversation. Mm-hmm. That was deeper than... You know, um, anything, that, any father-son yeah. conversation that had been in the series up to that point. Or just, to me, deeper dive into himself. Because, mm-hmm. I I don't know, it's been so long uh, with the original film. Mm-hmm. One of the things I said, and my ba- one of my backgrounds is psychology. Yeah. And I, I think I talked a lot about what Rocky must have been feeling in, yeah. in Rocky oh, yeah. Four, And... I guess this one, some of the scenes struck me as, okay, they're finally going to hit that. Yeah. Because uh, especially um, what really jumped out at me is when he, um, when, you know, Apollo is telling him not to stop the fight and he's like, don't ask me. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. But so it, it, it just, you, you could already see that that was going to be something tormenting him yeah so I, I like that you know now you get you get the characters talking out a lot of feelings that you had to just imagine Imagin- before right, you know exactly and i i think that maybe that's more conducive to the times too because we talk more about people talking about their feelings now and maybe in the 80s as far as movies you know they didn't think that was something that people would want to see right you never know yeah and and again then i think a lot of it was that you know he was probably told to keep this down to 90 minutes you know so they had to trim a lot of the dialogue right so you might as well get rid of the feelings yeah. and leave in the action yeah and, and, and so you know there's a couple other things like you know we see cause the the movie the, the the series including including the sequels have not gotten a whole lot into Rocky's possible feelings of guilt. Mm-hmm. Like he did say to Adonis early in the movie Creed that fight should have been stopped, mm-hmm. and then told reiterated that during the fight. You know when when Rocky's about to stop that fight, the Creed Conlon fight. But you know now here in this trailer, Rocky says to Adrian, referring to Apollo's death, "I let it happen." I've got to take everything he's got. So, and that really reminds mm-hmm. me of something that you said in the Rocky Four episode. That, you know, Rocky, you know, um, he felt that this is what he brought upon himself and that, that it was his uh, his duty to, yeah. to, to take this fight against Drago. Yeah, and he also 
like he deserved every punch he was going to get. Yeah. You know, it just kind of... And you said that, you know, had he died, you know, he would have accepted that, you Mm know. Um, So, yeah, we we see that. And then, you know, we see... And, you know, you and I both agree that even though... um, We agree that Rocky V is is a weaker film than, than others in the series... We both agree that the father-son relationship between Rocky and Rocky Jr. is one of the better elements right. of the movie. And, you know, we get a little preview of that here because, you know, there was not a lot. I mean, we could see that Rocky was a loving father in 2 through 4. But that th- this um, little soundbite that's in the trailer, that's deeper than anything Rocky had, had ever said to his son in, in any of those movies. Yeah. And I think... Um... I liked the element, too, where he was hearing Apollo's voice and hearing Mickey's voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I think that certainly in yeah, in a stressful fight yeah. like that, yeah. that, that's what would happen. I, I mean, so I, I really did like that. Yeah, you know, and, but, and if, if they were to bring that, you know, I, 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 because I know you and I, you know, other people seem not to like it, but you and I have reiterated that we like the scenes in Rocky five that depict Mickey, you know, Rocky's mm-hmm. memories right. or visions of him. I think that I thought they were excellent scenes. Mm-hmm. In fact, the, the scene of um, Rocky going back to the old now abandoned gym and remembering right. Mickey, that's one of my favorite scenes in the whole yeah, series. And, and the thing is that if you think about people, yeah. you know, if you have somebody who was an inspiration to you, yeah, and you come into a difficult time, even if that person's deceased. You know how many times we've said, you know, I can just hear this person saying this oh, yeah. to me. It, and so it, it gives him that element, of that humanity, where, you know, he, he's got that. He, he's, you know, because, you know, especially like we, we liked that in five. I like the fact that he's got Mickey with him there in, in four now. Yeah, and and, and Apollo so, considering. So you just you wonder, are they going to use that soundbite in the film? I I hope they do. I think that'd be great. Yeah. You know, you get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey loves you. Oh yeah. Um, and or then you know another like Adrian's quote from Rocky Five. You know, all those fighters, you mm-hmm. you beat them with heart, not muscle. You know, and if, I don't know if they're going to put that in this one or not. Yeah, but. I it just I I would hope. I mean, like I said, I'm looking yeah. at a more emotional, you know, yeah. like a deeper. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That kind and, of thing. And I, I think that, that I think both of those lines, you know, get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey love, because get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey loves you, and all all those fighters, you beat them with heart, not muscle. Those those are great lines. And they were unfortunately because they were in Rocky Five, a lot of people missed out on them or mm-hmm. don't remember them. So you had to put them in this movie that you know, mm-hmm. to put those you know lines into a wider audience. You know, um, right? I, I'd be all for it, and. Um, one thing I do know that Stallone did say is that the robot is going to be absent from this cut. Aww. And um, now Stallone um, did not give any um, specific reasons uh, for for that. My my educated guess is maybe he thought that you know may, I think probably he listened to the critics too much who criticized the scene. I I thought it was a fun innocuous scene that just showed. You know, in, in in a lighthearted way that, you know, Rocky, you know, is filthy rich. He has money to burn and, and yeah. he, he does nice things for his family. Although now, you know, thinking how many years later, how many people would be looking at that and going, big deal, we have Alexa. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean. Yeah, but I, I do like the scene. Although the person who um, uh, whose voice is used in the robot actually says, and I don't know, it could be just sour grapes, but he actually says he believes that it's being cut so Stallone won't have to pay him. Um, oh. But, you know, the thing is... Uh, uh, I'm sure not. Do you know something like that with a voice? Yeah, I, I, I would mean, yeah, I, I don't think... Well, first of all, I don't I don't know how much that guy would be expecting to make, but I'm sure they could find somebody else, you know, real cheap. Oh, Some oh, Rocky yeah. fan who could imitate the robot who would do it for nothing. Uh, you know, I would. Get, I would. See, you know, <laughs> so it's just kind of like that. I, I think that, um, again, you know, at the time, having a robot like that was pretty novel. I mean, it was... Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. It, it was something, and now I, I, maybe it isn't something that people would be as amused or impressed by. Like I said, everybody has Alexa or a Roomba that you, 
you know. Oh yeah. What what's there? There's a new commercial. Alexa, tell the Roomba to vacuum under the table, and it's like, okay, we've gotten so lazy, we can't even order around our own robot. I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah come on. But I, to me, I think it's just a great thing that you know, know. that you know puts the movie in a historical context that True. reminds you yeah. of of things that were considered you know on the cutting edge of technology back True. then. True. On you know? the other hand, there's probably other things that he was going to dedicate the time to. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like I said, like I said in that episode, the original cut of Rocky IV was actually two and a half hours long. I'd like to see that cut. You know, mm. um, I was going to say, let's see. And I was just thinking about, we were talking about technology. Yeah. Um, what will really throw everybody is when, uh, if they leave the scene in where he gives Adrian that watch that I... Oh, never, yeah, yeah. That watch <laughs> that I could never stand. It was like, if somebody gave me that, I'd be like, you don't know me. But the thing is that that's another thing that really dates the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. people are going to look at that and go, what's that? <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, all the Cold War elements date the movie, yeah. certainly. Absolutely. Um, and so, and, and again, I really wonder how many young people really understand the Cold War very well. I mean, you and I, mm-hmm. of course, lived through it. And, right. you know, I remember I was, I was, I had just turned 15 when I saw this movie right a few days before Christmas in um, 1985. And, you know, I remember, of course, Reagan was president at the time. And we, um, you know, the, the movie The Day After. Um, had come out in um, 1983. I, I've, I've never seen it, by I the way. Um, I, I wouldn't watch something like that. Yeah, oh. but for those of you who, for those of you who don't know, the younger people, if you want to find out, I think you can watch the whole movie on YouTube now. Actually, I think. Um, but anyway, it's a movie that portrays, you know, um, as a theory of what would have happened if we had a nuclear war. It, it was, I believe, I think it is still the highest rated made-for-TV movie of all time. Um, I mean, it had it had almost Super Bowl-type ratings, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, it was... even I've, I was I felt like I was the only person who didn't watch it, now I find out at least one other person didn't. Yeah, hey. Um, but, and, and it was supposedly... Um, it had some very disturbing scenes and, and disturbing images. Um, but anyway... Um, the point is, people, kids in my generation, we went to bed at night afraid of nuclear war. Well, and um, so there were a lot of movies that capitalized on that rivalry we had with the USSR. So, yeah. And like I said, six years ago when we did our um, Rocky Four episode, you know, obviously the movie was a product of... The product, the movie was a product of its time, but I think Stallone did an outstanding job taking the Rocky formula and putting it into the trends of the day, including the Cold War. Yeah, and I, I think right now, I, I think if again, since he's taking what I what I glean from the trailer, a deeper dive into feelings and that mm. type of thing, that fits more with the tone of today, I really I, think. I, I think so, and I, I think also, remember, Stallone was 39 when when the original came out. He's 75 now, and certainly at 75, you have a different perspective than you do at 39. Right. And I think, you know, um, you know, for the most part, really starting with Rocky Balboa, um, we saw... And I think really going back with, with, with Copland, which was, I think, 1997, um, we, we've seen Stallone, as he's gotten older, get more conscious about making deeper movies. And then especially, you know, with, with Rocky Balboa in 2006, I mean, he still does the occasional action flick, like the Expendables uh, trilogy, for example. But, um, you know, it's interesting is that if you look back at the entire series, mm-hmm. you know, even the original Rocky movie had deeper moments. Well, it did. So, but remember, you know, Stallone it was largely unknown at, at that time when, right. when that movie came out, so there weren't expectations that the public had of him, but it was after that movie when he decided to become this big action hero, right. and to a large degree, he was successful. I mean, for the better part of 10 years, he was the number one actor among young males, um, and it, but it cost him a lot of critical accolades. You know, he ended up being a, a whipping boy for the critics for a long time. And then he started to gain more respect, you know, really with Rocky Balboa. And then, of course, he, he got an Oscar nomination for Creed, which was his first 
Oscar nomination since the original Rocky 39 years earlier. That's and that's an incredibly long gap between Oscar nominations. <laughs> Too short of the record, Henry Fonda went 41 years. Um, so what I'm interested in imparting to people who are watching this mm-hmm. is the fact that as far as a trailer doing what to me a trailer should set out to do, mm-hmm. which is get you to want to watch this. Yes. And so I think I told you before we started rolling, I think this was very successful at Mm -hmm. getting me to want to see the director's cut. And was that your first reaction? Yeah, and really, uh, it it definitely, and I would have seen it no matter what. Well, I think we both would yeah. But yeah, it definitely gets me more interested. And, you know, I've seen all of the Rocky trailers, um, in, in the, both of the in, 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 both the teaser tr- trailers and the regular, the the full length trailers uh, from all the movies, all the all six Rockies, both Creeds, and there aren't a whole lot of them that I think are very good. One of the few that I really like a lot is um, Creed. Is, is is the first is the second trailer, the second trailer for Creed. I think that that's that's an excellent trailer. Um, most of them, you know, I, I, I'm no more than lukewarm about. It. In fact, I was just telling Michelle before we went on the air that I think it would be a fun experiment, especially with Michelle and I both being filmmakers, to just make our own trailers for, for these movies, you know. Um, it'd be interesting to see what each of us would do to promote the film and to make the to try to get others interested in the film. And I think um, with this one, like I said, just the fact that it did have a good number of clips that were the new clips yes to make people understand that yes there are going to be differences yeah and and it does seem like this is going to be um a deeper cut you know that there's going to be more dialogue and i my guess is that probably stallone is taking out the robot probably just because he thinks it's too corny too Mm -hmm. cartoonish um and I think instead, you know, he's going for, I mean, obviously, assuming all of this dialogue is going to be in the movie, mm-hmm. he is going for deeper dialogue. I think that's clear. Um, okay, Stallone, if for some <laughs> reason you actually do happen to stumble on this, that's really good dialogue in those clips. Leave it is, it yes, yes, Leave yes. Leave it in. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's probably what he's going for, and... I think he's, you know, trying to, you know, um, have the characters actually speak out their emotions rather than us having to guess. And I think you and I are pretty deep thinkers, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that's why we call this super deep movie analysis. But, you know, I, I think it, it is interesting to hear the, the characters actually talk out their motivations. Well, it's and, always fun for us, though, to actually, re- you know, hear that we were right when yes. we were speculating. <laughs> yeah, that, you that's know, right. You know, that like, that's how... Yeah, like like you like yeah. like your motivation about why Rocky felt obligated to you know take the Drago fight, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you know you said that six years ago, and it's confirmed <laughs> by this trailer, and so um, yeah, I I think that and another thing that I like is that apparently Drago is you know the, apparently Drago is going to talk in English more in this cut. Um, and it's one of those things, um, I, I am a sports fanatic. In fact, uh, for those of you who don't know, I commentate high school uh, football and basketball for radio here in the Indianapolis area. And I've been watching sports since 1978, and I just never could accept uh, Drago not talking at those press conferences because I, I remember watching plenty of um, interviews with athletes from behind the Iron Curtain back in those days. Mm-hmm. Very often they would talk through an interpreter, but they they would talk. I, I, I don't ever recall seeing... Yeah, I had I ever mentioned in any of our uh, nine million hours of discussion <laughs> on these things that in a way they that was um, a way to make Drago seem more menacing. Um, to well, the opponents. I, I, I said that in the oh. Rocky Four episode. Okay. I, I, I mean, I just I assumed it was just a plot device, you know. Yeah, because you know. I mean, if he's seeming more aloof and just kind of staring yeah. down his nose at everybody, yeah. and it, it it's more intimidating. It oh, really yeah. is. And, and so and I, well, I, I was think, wondering if that's what they were doing. Oh, I, I assumed it was. 
I assumed that, I mean, it, because mm -hmm. the movie had almost a pro wrestling tone at times. Yeah. And I think Stallone's trying to get rid of that. And keep in mind. So did Five. Sorry. Oh, oh no question. No, abso <laughs> absolutely. Five even more so. And then with Rocky Balboa, he went way back to the you know the tone of the original, which right. where it was more about the more about the story rather than about the spectacle. Right. Um, which really, it from three to through five, it was more about the spectacle. Mm. Um, and even though the spectacle, you know, was often very exciting. Don't get me well, wrong. Yeah. But um, you know, um, you know, I think in. Certainly, each movie in the series has some influence from the time in which it was released. It's almost impossible for a movie not to have some influence right. o over the time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you would have to really try super hard not to, um, to, to make a movie that just doesn't have any elements of, of the time that it's made in. Right, unless, um, of course, you're doing something that's a period piece. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. No, I'm well. Uh, yeah. I mean, like if you were doing a story about a 1920s boxer. Or something, oh yeah, but but even or, then, you, know. it, you would have to try really hard to make sure you didn't accidentally put right, something, exactly. you know, something modern, some kind of anachronism, you know, because oh. um, those those do pop up. Oh and, yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, you know, you most movies. Especially if you've watched a lot of movies that were released over a period of many years, you can pretty well tell from a movie pretty quickly the era that it was made in. Well, yeah. Um, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's just a, a fact. But you know, um, but there were other trends of the day that affected Stallone's writing throughout. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think with um, th this movie. You know, and keep in mind that with Creed two, now that we've seen Drago as a much more human character, um, yeah. Um, I was thinking, you know, that they can bring that out in him a little bit, and you'll know, you know, you would yeah, be yeah. And I, I, I think, I think because of what we mm -hmm. saw from Drago in in, in Creed two, it will make. Um, it, it it'll make it a, a little more believable to at least to the people who've seen Creed mm -hmm. two when if when they see Drago talk more in this movie and seem more like a human being, mm -hmm. because even before we see his soft side come out there in that incredible climax in Creed two, oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I still marvel at just that. I say I am if you haven't seen us do the super deep movie analysis of that one, I'm the type of person that. I always see what's coming somehow. Yeah. People hate watching TV movies, like because with me, I mean, I keep it to myself. But it's like there's not much that surprises me, and that did. And I just like, okay, that that was a success on Sylvester Stallone's part because I never saw it coming. Yeah, and nor, nor did I, and I I saw it in the you theater know. on the opening day, and I, I was I was stunned by by the moment and. You were in the theater. Um, did I ever ask you? Did you hear like a collective gasp from the audience over that? I I don't remember any reaction. <laughs> I was so absorbed w with it, but um, I could just imagine me going, <gasps> "Yeah," but it it, it was certainly um, it was a powerful moment for me, and um, yeah. and you know, but even long before that, from yeah. you know, the early minutes of the movie when you see Drago, you know, at his apartment there in Kiev, and then you know um, when you see him working his son like a racehorse um, and meeting Rocky in the restaurant. Um, you know, even though he's not a likable person at that point, you certainly see his humanity. You know, he doesn't seem like a robot. He seems mm -hmm. like he, he seems like he's turned into a bitter old man. Yeah. Um, Which um, I said that, and, and I'm wondering how it's going to look and we have to save that for once we actually do see mm -hmm. the film. Yeah. Um, as far as I, I think I said, you know, that here, and this was true a lot of, of a, <clears throat> excuse me, for a lot of what I would call Iron Curtain athletes, mm -hmm. they were just, I want to say manipulated beings. I yeah. mean, they had every, every aspect of their lives controlled. Yeah. They didn't get to decide anything. I'm, I'm. Yeah, um, if you have ever seen like the Nadia Kamenich story or something like that, I, I know she, she. I know who she is, but yeah, I don't. I mean, you but know. you know, talking about how literally every second of her life was oh yeah controlled. So if you imagine that. 
that's something, you know, maybe Drago got into boxing because he loved it. And now it's not fun anymore because right. he's so, you know, I don't know if some of that will come out that uh, you can see he's kind of, you know, a product or a, you know, just a tool of the state or whatever. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I saw um, an analysis on um, Creed two that only focused on the um, Ivan and Victor mm-hmm. relationship um, rather than the, the whole movie. But the, the guy had a really interesting point. He said what Stallone did with the character of Ivan Drago is he, you know, he took that one scene in um, Rocky IV when um, um, Drago threw that member of the Politburo into the crowd and, <laughs> yeah. and said, I fight to win for me, for right. me. And and built on that because right. that moment is one of the few times in Rocky IV when you get a little bit of a glimpse into his soul. Right. Um, and I think it's... I was going to say maybe that's what I was just saying and yeah. taking longer. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, no, you, you know, you got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. And, and, and so it'll be interesting if that's a little more explored. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it would be, I'm going to say you you don't get a sense of this, but you know when you have these different cuts and about characters, I wonder. You know, I start wondering now. You know, uh, what we're going to see from Polly. I yeah, mean, if, if that's going to be a little bit different, or what we're going to, you know, I mean, because that's yeah. kind of what what we're seeing with the new stuff in the trailer, and I think what we see for Polly in the trailer is still just the same. Well. What what I what I suspect with with Polly is because of course I haven't seen obviously every bit right. uh, of material that was filmed for Rocky Four, so I don't know how serious they could make his character. What I've often said is that the Polly in three through five ended up being basically a cartoon version of the Polly from the original, where he was a raging, violent alcoholic. Right. And then in three through five, he was largely relegated to a crude but harmless buffoon. You know, someone who, you know, he, he was crusty, crude, um, you know, um, ill-mannered, but who is not a particularly bad person or a yeah, malicious and, person. And it's somebody, it's interesting because Rocky kept him around and, yeah. and always had him there in the corner. And well, yeah. You know, and well, and, 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 you know, and, he, and he and Polly have that little scene on the way to the ring in Russia yeah. too, where Polly sort of says that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So in his own way. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you know, the thing is we know about Rocky is that he's a loyal person and that he's a family oriented person. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he would have always been loyal to Polly, no matter what. And we, and we did on a couple occasions see that um, Polly was loyal to, to Rocky as mm-hmm. well. That you know when he made that comment to him, you know the the, t- the Tinder speech mm-hmm. that you described, um, yeah. or if I could be anybody else, I'd be you. Um, where, where Polly said that to Rocky, and then in Rocky Five, when um, Polly, you know, um, was drunk there in Andy's bar, and then you know he defended Rocky when right. it, yeah. uh, when Rocky was criticized by Tommy. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it was a um, and but and then one thing I lo- one of my one of the highlights of Rocky Balboa for me is that Polly went back to not only not only being a serious character but also being a logical progression of the poly from 30 years earlier in the original someone who now um sees what he's become Mm -hmm. and you know uh, feels like he's failed so it would be interesting to see if they have anything new in the the director's oh yeah yeah if if they make him a more serious character yeah now obviously they're 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 taking away the robot so that will that will take away some of polly's cornier moments from the movie at least yeah Uh, now we see in the trailer you know when rocky says it's in russia and we we still see polly say are you nuts yeah so there's at least a little bit of his you know well that would i think that would be a normal natural reaction not just from (laughs) polly i mean if somebody you know Seriously, I mean, I wanted you to imagine you're sitting there. You don't even know this. You're you're on this press conference panel, and for the first time, you're hearing this. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who who would actually be going Russia? That sounds like fun. Never been there before. No, everybody like what? Yeah. Now, now Polly's outspoken. Some other people might be going. What the is he thinking? You know, but Polly will speak right out. 
that's one thing you know he's and that's an interesting thing about the Polly character in general is because he's the character it's allowed to not have a filter yeah oh yeah yeah so maybe a lot of times he's saying something that other people are thinking you yeah know? And, and, and you and I have both agreed that Polly would have been at the press conference to say the things that Raleigh that to say right. the things that Rocky was too gentlemanly to say right you know you know, like he described himself as the unsilent majority, you know. Um, <laughs> so, you know, he voiced what a lot of people felt about communism, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like just a, like an everyday man in, in the 80s, you know. Right. So, um, you know, he was crude, but he you know, he was crude and simplistic, but he got his point across. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, there's... Again, I have obviously I haven't seen. I would love to see all the material that was shot with Polly for Rocky IV. Mm -hmm. um, but if if they take away the um, the robot, that will obviously take away some of, like I said, Polly's most cartoonish moments from mm -hmm. the movie. And um, if you just have the line, you know, "Are you nuts?" by itself, that's not so cartoonish. Mm -hmm. um, so on the same thing, on the same path. Um, what do you suppose? Uh, might come across differently about Adrian based on well, that. Well, I think mainly just more depth, you know, um, because Talia Shire, you know, of the five movies that she's in, got the least to do in this film. She had she had more scenes in Rocky Five, especially more mm -hmm. dialogue in Rocky Five, especially that scene that's a particular favorite of mine when she talks Rocky down after he's abandoned by Tommy out on the streets. And... Um, Especially the line, um, what's the line? Um, all those beatings you took in the ring, I took them with you. You know, I, I always love that line because I think a relationship is supposed to be about two people going through everything together. And I've I've never had, you know, maybe it's extremely rare, maybe I'm not unusual, but I've never had that kind of love, you know. Either. And you know, I don't know that I ever will. I'm 50 now. Um, mm -hmm. If if I do, I'll welcome it. But you know, we'll see. <clears throat> but. But yeah, it's 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 a very emotional scene to me for, for that for that reason. And so, are there any? But I was going to say, like oh. with that trailer as we watched mm. it, since that's yeah kind of what we're picking apart is is there anything in the trailer that gives a hint? Oh yeah, well, like there was the scene where Adrian um, is telling Rocky, referring to Apollo wanting to fight Drago. Right. Um, he thinks he's fighting for the whole country, but his reasons are wrong. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I think Adrian will probably have more lines in this. Um, and as far you know, of course, Adrian's only really long block of dialogue in the movie is that very famous scene, which, I mean, it was a fine scene. It's not one of my favorites. It's, it's a scene that, you know, to me, it's just, you know, it's predictable. It's exactly what you'd expect when he comes home and... She's just found out that he's going to fight Drago, right. and she's standing on the top of the stairs wearing her, her pink robe, <laughs> and uh, I yeah. just, I, and you know to me you know it was um, that they played um, you, the line you can't win I think in in every trailer in, yeah. in every TV ad, it, and to me it, it's just a very textbook scene. Um, it, you know who who knows if if that will you know be the same or not, but based on I like that line that they included from her, you know, and um, it'll be interesting to see that whole scene. You know, Adrian again says he thinks he's fighting for the whole country, but his reasons are wrong. I wonder if she'll dive into it, you know, why he, Apollo's really right. doing it. You know, yeah. maybe he can't accept. My my feeling has always been that Apollo, you know, with his monstrous ego, just can't accept the aging process, you know, that he yeah. wants to think he can still do this when he can't. Yeah, I, I always looked at it you know this way he had the excuse of doing it for the country but he was really it was a personal yeah you know, personal thing although i will say it is interesting in the context of today and i, I promise this is not going to delve into a partisan political um statement here but this is just a reality of the time we live in it's interesting to see that you know apollo creed uh, you know as a black man wearing the red white and blue um, talking about, you know, basically the defender of America in this era in which, you know, there are elements that are telling black people they're, they're supposed to hate America, you know, mm -hmm. and that America is systemically racist. So in in that context, it's more interesting to see Apollo, you know, right. being, being so patriotic, you know. So are there questions? I don't want to say that it's not questions I have from watching the trailer, but yeah. as far as... 
watching the trailer and then looking ahead to the actual movie, mm-hmm. things I'm thinking, I'm wondering if you're going to get any more anything out of Apollo Creed's wife. You know, because <laughs> one of the things I said is I'm wondering, you know, does she actually did she actually have anything to say to him at the funeral or something you know i mean there because i don't know that would have so i start my my wheels because i'm a filmmaker i'm a writer i think of all these things so that's something to to, see these are just questions oh yeah leaving the trailer that we can ask now and then when we talk about the movie we can oh yeah absolutely see if anything that we're talking about we can answer yeah and you know um i'll tell you I'm glad you mentioned that because prior to you mentioning that, I had never thought about the element of um, Marianne Creed in this movie. Um, I, I can't imagine that she would be taken out. Um, I mean, I, I don't see any reason that she would be. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. Like I said, how because of the way that the character of Ivan Drago was um, portrayed in Creed Two, it would be more believable now to have Drago talk more in this movie, to Mm -hmm. to show him as more of a human being and less of a machine or comic book type Mm -hmm. character. On the other hand, though, because of the way that Marianne Creed is portrayed in Creed and Creed um, 2, I don't know. I I think there would be some risk. um, Of course, I don't know if there's any additional material that was filmed with that character or not, for, for Rocky IV, but I, I've pointed out before that the way that the character is portrayed by Felicia Rashad in the Creed movies is quite different than the way she was portrayed by Sylvia Mills in two and four. Mm-hmm. Granted, only in a few scenes and only a few lines in each movie, but certainly, you know, she the uh, Sylvia Mills portrayal seemed more submissive, you know, um, and the um, the Felicia Rashad character seemed more more dominant, mm-hmm. you know, more assertive, more r- rough. But like you said... But that might be a natural progression because she's yeah. a widow. Yeah, and it, it could be that living as a widow for 30 years, and then also, like she said to Adonis, in the young Adonis in the opening scene of Creed, you know, she talked about the anger that she felt, you know, mm-hmm. after her husband's death and, you know, pushing people away, you know. Mm-hmm. So certainly losing a spouse like that i mean she would have been presumably somewhere around late 30s early 40s when her husband died and certainly becoming a widow suddenly like that um i mean i saw you know my father become a widow when my stepmother died of pancreatic cancer several years ago after nearly a year of illness you know he was 71 but you know and obviously he was prepared for the death but when you it's emotionally harder when you have a death that's sudden like that and then when you're at an age when you know you don't expect you, you don't grow up expecting you're going to be a widow when you're mm-hmm. about 40 you know yeah so it's certainly things like and then there's the anger you know mm-hmm. and i think the thing is um she probably felt anger toward her husband for doing something you know mm-hmm. that he didn't need to do they didn't need the money obviously right um he did it for his own ego and and you know it killed him and and one thing that's really interesting is that the two creed movies have never even mentioned the two children that the creeds had that were shown briefly in rocky II. Hmm. um so yeah, I mean, they would obviously be adults by now, presumably out of the house. But right. but the, yeah. it's it's interesting that they've never been mentioned. We have no idea what happened to them. But the point is that Marianne would have been left a widow to raise two children on her right. own. Right. You know, obviously with a, obviously, a, lot, of, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but still, you know, um, I, I can imagine that she would have felt anger. You know. Yeah. So like I said, just I was so that's a question putting yeah. out there yeah. for us to. Once we see the movie, and, and we can I see would, if they do anything. And, and I would suspect that there probably wasn't a lot of additional footage filmed with Apollo and his wife for the movie. There, there could have been. I mean, you no, know. No, I'm just but, thinking yeah. about like yeah. even at the funeral. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, somehow if she's angry, I can't even imagine, you know, yeah. if, you know, she would go up to Rocky and say something. But, you know, but, that's, but, but that's the funeral scene since we see Rocky talk to Adrian at the funeral. Let's see. Right. Um, what does he say? Um, it, it, Rocky tells Adrian at the funeral, I let it happen. I've got to take everything he 
I've got to take everything he's got. I'm really looking forward to that scene. Yeah. You know. So we'll see. Um, so I think, and you know, maybe Adrian will have some deep dialogue there, and you know, you just wonder. Will she be the submissive, supportive wife who just tries to make him think he doesn't have anything to feel guilty about? You know, who mm-hmm. knows? Um, but no question that um, it is something that Rocky, you know, um, would, would likely feel guilty about for a long yeah. time. And, um, you know, who knows? Maybe it's part of the reason. Maybe he really feels indebted. To, maybe he feels like it's his responsibility to yeah. train, you know, um, Apollo's mm-hmm. son, and um, so. So we've with all the elements. I think I was going to say definitely we're in agreement that this trailer does its job in making, at least us. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would get people interested in seeing this. Oh, yes. Film. So, what we were talking about is what's so kind of unique is there's just going to be one showing. Hello? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. It's going to be one showing. You know a little, you've read a little more about this. Yeah, that's so, right. So it's just on the, you, you mentioned November 11th. Yeah, Thursday. And yeah. how, so they're basically, obviously, it's going to be different times in different areas. So yeah. people should check. There, 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 I never, I've already checked. There are a few theaters here that are showing it. Um, I don't have a memorized right okay. off. But yeah, just go in mm-hmm. on and type in. Um, Rocky Four directors cut screenings and it, it should come up. Now, how is it that they were going to work this uh, Q and A thing or this whatever you know, afterwards? I, I would guess probably there's going to be some sort of. Um, it, it's let me scroll down here. It says um, a Fathom in theater event. Fathom is the name of a company, which I did not know that until you know I, I looked that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't either. So um, basically, go, go look up Fathom events or something like that, and hopefully there will be some kind of email address or mm-hmm. t- some place to, to text a, a question. But yeah, the um, the movie is going to be, uh, it's there's going to be an interactive Q&A session with Sylvester Stallone. So yeah, I, I definitely will be there for that. And um, so... Yeah, I'm really excited about it, and hopefully people will come with some good questions, and you know, he'll get, he'll give some good answers. And you know, several years ago, Stallone was asked. To, well, this is pre Rocky Balboa, so it's been quite a few years now. But he was asked to um, rate all of the Rocky movies on a scale of one to ten, and he rated the first one ten out of ten. He rated he rated Rocky three uh, nine out of ten. He rated two and four seven at seven point five out of ten, and then he rated Rocky five zero. Mm-hmm. And and I really believe that giving the Rocky five zero, I think it's a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he, I think it's because he knows other people didn't like. Yeah, it. Yeah, and so I and I and I wish he would not have said that because he, in doing so he helped perpetuate the movie's negative reputation. We both agree, and I hope you all, if you haven't done so, will go back and watch our Rocky five episode from six years ago. Um, and uh, where, where we both if you have a few hours to kill yeah it's, it's yeah that's that one's um a little over two hours it's longer than the movie <laughs> well uh, they all are yeah oh the, the from four on they are they all are yeah um, um and uh so uh, it, but basically um yeah the rocky five episode is one of, i think one of our best episodes and mm-hmm. it's also um of all the rocky episodes it's the second most viewed um the rocky four is the most viewed by the way um, interesting that four and five are more viewed than you know than one, two, and three, but it's um, in Rocky Five we we talk about you know we acknowledge the the shortcomings of the movie, the things that could have been done better, the corny elements, but we also talk about the great moments that are often overlooked because of the corny moments. And what I said to Michelle in that episode, you know, the, the best ten epis- the best ten moments from Rocky Five, I would put up with the best ten moments from any any right. of the others. But the thing is that the worst ten moments are mostly unparalleled in the series. Mm-hmm. And I think it's those moments that ruined the movie for a lot of people. Yeah. And um so what do you and, and and by the way that's um not not to get sidetracked but that's one reason why we both enjoyed even though it's a very rough and raw the alternate Rocky 5 cut that you know um had had a more serious tone to it mm-hmm. um that we reviewed also um last year uh, so but yeah and and you know and I I think that ro- this 
director's cut of Rocky Four is going to have a more serious tone as well, based on what I've seen so yeah. far. And I, I definitely, like I said, I think that the trailer does provide that needed inspiration. Yeah. You know, especially if you've got people go looking at it thinking, director's cut of Rocky Four. well, I've already seen Rocky Four. what, you know. Um, so I, I think that if... No matter how many times you've seen Rocky IV, it looks like it's going to be worth seeing. Yes. And, you know, when I first saw that it was a 96-minute cut, and I thought, well, the original is only 91, so we just get five new minutes mm-hmm. of a material. That's not going to be, you know, very much worth seeing. But um, but then I found out that, you know, a lot of it is replacing other mm-hmm. scenes. So, uh, like I said, um, there's, a, there's supposedly 40 minutes of previously unreleased material out of 96, so nearly half yeah. of the movie is going to be brand new to us. Right. So that's that's, that's really gonna, exciting. Yeah, yeah that is. Um, and, and again, based on the trailer, it seems like this is going to be a movie that has deeper dialogue. You know, one thing I mentioned um, back in the Rocky IV episode is that another thing that made the movie a product of its time is that, you know, it was released in the MTV slash music video Video. pop and and pop music soundtrack era and that's why there's far more pop music in rocky four than any of the previous movies in the series with just a lot of the music with nothing going on but like him driving around right yeah Yeah. it was the music video too yeah there were there were a lot of the movie does look like a music video and in fact actually i learned since our last episode that if you subtract the opening recap of rocky three the closing credits and the montages the movie is one hour and six minutes long. Rocky Four is. Mm. So that, that means that the montages, the Rocky Three recap and the credits take up 25 out of 91 minutes. Wow. So, yeah, um, I think this is going to be a deeper cut. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I was really curious about is what's going to be done with the music. And, um, and by the way, sometimes when there's a director's cut, there will be a separate IMDb profile for the movie. So I've been I keep checking so far they haven't put up one for Rocky Four, at least not as of a few days ago. But one thing I was really curious about with this movie is the music. What are they gonna do with the music? I mean, is it gonna be, you know, mm-hmm. the same? Are they gonna put in new stuff? But um I noticed in at in the last frame of the uh, trailer where it has like the basic credits that you would see on a movie poster, it still says um music by Vince DeCola, you know, who did all of the instrument all of the instrumental music from Rocky Four. And like I said, um, even though Bill Conti did the instrument, instrumental music from 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6, I think it was a good choice to go with Vince DiCola for Rocky IV because he's a synthesizer maestro. And I thought all that synthesizer-heavy music went really well with mm-hmm. all, the, 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 with all of the, tech, the technological stuff in right. Rocky IV. And so um, I, I guess that they're going to keep a lot, of, a lot of the music the same. And um, yeah, what we'll see. But since his name is there on the in the credits, I assume they're going to use a lot of his music. So th- that'll be interesting. And by the way, I, I don't think this had happened when 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 we did our last episode. But Vince DiCola just a few years ago released his own CD that has um, all of I guess everything he wrote for the movie, most of which made it into the film. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, a lot of the instrumental music that did not make the original soundtrack, which was very pop dominated okay. so. so when this would be something interesting to do mm. is when you figure out where we're going to be seeing it yeah probably um, castleton i guess is that is that where it's going to be yeah i think okay. i think that's the closest one to hear the okay castleton so movie. yeah this is if you're in the indianapolis area what i was going to say is that would be something too where maybe we could put out an announcement to the people who like to watch us that we're going to be there yeah come yeah. out Let's do a meetup. Yeah, we yeah, could, let's do a meetup. Yeah, yeah we, we, have, we have we haven't done anything like that. Yeah, we could like go to a, like you know yeah. a, some kind of coffee house or Denny's or something before and after just to, you know have mm-hmm. a soda or relax and you know talk about Rocky stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be great. Um, so you know that's why I, I'm glad we're doing this trailer. You know, thirty it's thirty days until the, the premiere. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that that would be great to to meet up with some of you all who are who are diehard fans. And you know, Michelle, we've recorded now between all of the um, Rocky episodes and you know the the, uh, the the six Rocky movies, the two Creed movies, the uh, Rocky the Rocky um, five 
Yeah, the Rocky V alternate cut, mm-hmm. and uh, then some of these trailer supplements. We've now we have more than twenty four hours of Rocky <laughs> wow. discussion online now. So uh, definitely, you know, we appreciate all of those of you who, who tune in. You know, maybe and, we uh, we'll do something live sometime. Yeah, that that would be great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. If if you want to come to see, you know, one of the Indianapolis screenings, please let us know. And yeah, it's it's one night only, so yeah, we'll mm-hmm. definitely be there because this is the kind of movie that works so well on the big screen. I remember I saw the original in a theater at the Ohio Theater in my hometown of Madison, Indiana, during Christmas break, uh, two or three days before Christmas mm-hmm. back in nineteen um, eighty five, and it was a spectacular experience on the big mm-hmm. screen. And I'm sure this one will be e- even better. And oh, by the way, as far as the music, for whatever it's worth, throughout the, this trailer for the Rocky Four Directors Cut. There are um, synthesized, uh, or- or- synthesized, orchestrated versions of "Eye of the Tiger" and "Gonna Fly Now." So, don't know if that's going to be in the film, but that's yeah. that was that's what was in the trailer. And we'll find out. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I think I think there's nothing left to do but to tell people to check out the trailer. Yeah. For themselves. And, you know, it's a three-minute trailer. We've talked an hour and five minutes. Yeah, I <laughs> I think that's about our average uh, time yeah. for these things. But check out the trailer online. And, again, you still have the Super Deep Movie Analysis page on Facebook yeah, or it's, something like that. Well, it's it's on my, my YouTube channel, which is oh, simply okay. Lex Zorn, L-E-C-Z-O-R-N. Um, just go to that channel, and it has um, not only super deep movie analysis, but also um, a lot of my short films, uh, most of which I made under quarantine with my son last year. Okay, so sorry before I forget. Oh my yeah, train yeah. Of go, thought, go, go ahead. Yeah, where absolutely. I was going with that yeah. is, if you go to the page, if you know, if you had a page where you could let everybody know. Mm-hmm. When we're going to be at the theater? And yeah, all that. yeah. When so, I, when I know that, I'll go ahead and post. I'll yeah. post that. Yeah, and yeah. And by the way, you can find me on all social media. L e c z o r n. Um, and I intentionally chose a name that nobody else had, so that you know I uh, can get all of the social media. Um, I can, I can get easy social media addresses for all of them. So. Yeah, I don't know about easy, but my name is <laughs> Michelle Gusso, and. You can stick that name in on YouTube and find my channels, and even if you put me into the Google search, I come up just about everywhere. So I think that'll do that. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so. Um, yeah, that would be great to, to, to see some of you all there. And you know, I I always you know um, love talking with other Rocky fans. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, and again, especially because this is such a unique experience, and you know, um, any other. Film Stallone wants to try this with. I, I'll welcome it, um, but I just have a feeling that this, this is the one. For, yeah. yeah, this is the one that's most conducive to you know a director's cut that's going to be a lot different than the original. And keep in mind, like I, I said in the beginning of the um, in the opening segment of the Rocky Five alternate cut episode that we did last year. You know, Michelle, you and I are filmmakers, so we understand this, but a lot of people who don't work in film, they don't understand the importance of editing, how much mm-hmm. editing can affect a movie, right. not in, not only in tone and in emphasis, mm-hmm. but even in, in plot. Yeah. Um, so, um, like, like I mentioned, for example, how Rocky Balboa was filmed with Marie becoming Rocky's girlfriend, and how much different that would have made the film had they left it that way, mm-hmm. which they ended up toning it down to... Friend. Yeah, which I, I actually liked better. Yeah, and I, I think I think I think you know I think uh, that romance might have worked well in, in a sequel, but I think put in a movie where one of the primary elements is Rocky grieving from his wife, I think that would have been disjointed. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, they Stallone described it as as a friendship that could later turn to romance. Um, although Marie it should be noted was never seen nor mentioned in either of the Creed movies. Um, so, okay. who knows? I mean, Stone has been known to bring back characters after decades' absences before. So, you know, that's that's well, part I've, of the... Well, I've got an idea. Let's just see what happens with this one first. Yes. <laughs> okay. And, um, <laughs> and, and uh, by the way, one, one uh, final note. Um, it has been announced that Creed Three is going on 
but without Sylvester Stallone, um, he said he's not going to be in it. But he is working on the Rocky prequel series, okay, uh, TV series, and hmm. um, I haven't heard any updates. But he supposedly was going to play Rocky again, um, this time training an illegal immigrant, mm -hmm. like we what we agreed last year um, that would be a um, very timely subject. So. <laughs> Well, I'll be watching for that. I, I, I believe, you know, Stallone's mother, Jackie, just died last year at the age of 98. And I really believe that Stallone, in one way or another, whether it's another Rocky film, another Creed film, or another spinoff, I think Stallone will play Rocky the rest of his life. It's mm -hmm. too much of a, a part of him. And it's too great a character, mm -hmm. you know, that he's now played Rocky in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. So, okay. yeah. I oh. think that he'll. I think he'll stick with it. I, I think I won't believe the character's dead until Stallone is dead, which hopefully won't be for a long time. Okay. So, like I said, we'll see you at the theater. Yes, that's right. Yeah, thirty days from today, Veterans Day, Thursday. Remember, it's not a Friday. What's it? It's, it's an odd choice for you know uh, the. To They're do hoping it on a Thursday, well but. because uh, more people aren't seeing movies that night, so they. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that's a good. That's a good point. And I guess they figure the diehards like us will be there whatever day it is. Okay. So. So, all right, I hope to see you all. Um, it, I'll let you know when we work out the details. It'll probably be at the Castleton Cinemas here in Indianapolis, which I, I think is an AMC theater. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. But okay. that's where we saw, Michelle and I saw the original Creed. Um, we, we saw. I had actually seen it previously at a theater in Avon. At, uh, and then I, was, I took Michelle to see it. Uh, she had never seen it. I, I saw it a second time at a theater. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So... All right, so you're, so you're the guest. Uh, you always get the last word, so. <laughs> like I said, uh, just check back, and we will see you at the theater. Okay, all right. So is, is that, that it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, thanks so much for bearing with us, uh, for, lis for listening to us talk for an hour and 11 minutes about a three-minute trailer. So once again, um, the Rocky for Rocky versus Drago, the ultimate director's mm -hmm. cut, will be in theaters one night only, Thursday, November 11th, Veterans Day. Uh, followed by a, I think it's followed by a, an interactive Q&A with Sylvester Stallone. I, I can't imagine it would be before, but I think it's after the movie. So, But check your local listings. Uh, so, And I hope those of you in the Indianapolis area will come out and see us, but you know, we'll have more information about that later. So, um, And then, of course, uh, are you going to come back for the episode on the um, director's mm -hmm. cut after we yeah, see it? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right, we'll be back in a few weeks with that. And... I've got some other episodes planned for other movies, too. I'll try to get around to it in the near future. So, anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thanks, uh, once again, to special guest co-host Michelle Gusso. And thanks to you, the viewers. Uh, so, um, this is Lex Zorn saying goodnight. And remember, there is a difference only you can make. <laughs>